Ready, set, go. Now. We are recording. All right, first and foremost, Curtis upgraded the chair in our little filming studio, and it is the most uncomfortable chair in the history of chairs. So you have to bear with me. I'm going to maybe try to start a petition for a new chair for Curtis. So if you could just put hashtag new chair for Curtis all over the social medias, I would appreciate it. My butt would thank you. All right. So we have kind of a cool fly, a real basic fly that I've been playing with lately. Um, mostly for with still waters in mind for this. I think it will be a, a good pattern for leeches, calbatus, nymphs, scuds. It's just kind of a do-it-all. Um, and we have a fire hole 633 size 14 in the vise and uh, I'm not going to put a bead on this because I'll probably fish it on as one of the top flies on on the midge tip which is something we need to film Curtis how to do midge tip stuff task item for Curtis all right so I'm just gonna start the thread this is a dot camel uh, just any brown thread you could even use like a wine thread or something like that it would work great now the tail on this is a cool product it's Coctelion tail fibers so as you can see those are very coarse fibers similar in consistency to the pheasant tail here's a individual feather so you can see it's nice and mottled and I'm just gonna pluck off a few of those and use those as the tail on this fly all right, just a few fibers like that. And I'm gonna do a few snug wraps and then come up under the tail to, to kind of lock it in place. And I'll wrap that up the shank. And we won't use the rest of this. You can use that for like pheasant tails and the like the video Curtis did called the what? The American, the Marikenchi? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sometimes Curtis and Lent shouldn't be left to their own devices at the shop. Okay, so now at this point, what I'm going to do is create a bit of a taper. And I'm going to taper it up just a bit. This is the part where Curtis plays clown music because he knows I hate it. Okay, now what I've done is I've taken some, just some squirrel, gray squirrel or pine squirrel or whatever it is, and we did a video called Make Your Own Squirrel Dub. And I mixed squirrel with cinnamon UV ice dub. On this one, I used pheasant tail ice dub and brown UV ice dub. The key when you do this, because squirrel's so short, is you take the ice dub out of the packet. I'll show you with some claret. So you see that? If I mix all that in with squirrel, it would uh, just kind of twist all up. So you kind of just get it like this, cut it about three-eighths of an inch to a quarter inch sections, and when you blend it, it will, it will go in nicely with the squirrel. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rope. So the rope dub technique that our homeboy Ian Wilson's been doing so well on the Instas. Um, we're going to show you how to do that. And uh, it's kind of a cool technique because it makes natural segmentation in the body. So I'm just going to dub on some of this squirrel. So I have a, a pretty healthy dubbing loop there. And now I'm going to create a dubbing loop. So one side of the loop has squirrel, the other side's thread, and then I'm going to loop my thread around again to reinforce that. Close off the loop. And the reason I do that is because the more you twist up this A dot thread, the, the more likely you are to break it. So we have four strands of thread one strand of dub. And now I'm just going to twist this all up with my gator grip tool. Whoa. Uh, Crisis averted. Butterfingers cheech. So 
So I'm going to twist it up pretty tight so it creates kind of a rope. So you can see how nice and, and tight that is. And I'm just going to use the rotary feature of my vise to twist that up. And because I created a, a taper on the underbody of the fly, um, it'll, it'll kind of create a nice little natural taper. I'll go to right there. Can I cut wire with these scissors? These are fancy. Okay, so from here, I'm not gonna create a case out of any material. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make another loop, but this time I'm not gonna put anything in it first. And if I create just your traditional dubbing loop and see that I doubled up my thread again, but if I create a traditional dubbing loop when I wrap it it's going to be much spikier so I'm going to put my tool in first just kind of keep that loop open with my finger like that if that makes any sense and then if you just pull the dub out of the corner of the bag like this and load up your loop it'll kind of line up those fibers exactly how you want them to go in the loop so just like that. And that might be too much, but it's better to do too much in the loop than not enough because you can always just trim it off. See all the squirrel flying everywhere. Little known fact, old Brigham from the shop that we clown so much is deathly allergic to squirrel and make his eyes swell shut. So good luck tying this bug, buddy. All right, so from here, I'm just going to wrap this loop, and I'm not going to do this rotary style because after every wrap, I want to preen the fibers back almost like it were a soft tackle. So I probably had twice as much material on there than I needed. So I'll just tie that off so I don't crowd the eye. And if I just take my scissors and leave them open and just kind of run them into that loop, it will cut the thread and none of the fibers. Little uh, dubbing loop hack for you. Okay, so now I'll create a nice little head. You could use a different color thread for this and make a little hot spot. And we'll whip finish it. Those are nice scissors. That's my old ones. <coughs> it's the rich people stuff. I've been I've been tying with another brand lately because I keep Fiskers? dropping. Yeah, Fiskers. No, actually, I have them here. Let me show you. They came with the hair cutting kit that I got. Super sweet. They are waffle waffle scissors. So. You know really <laughs> super sharp <laughs> really nice fine points <laughs> oh geez if someone uh, wants them just message me and uh, we'll sell them to you for a real good price all right so I'm gonna brush this out now and that's gonna pick out all the little buggy fibers from that loop and uh, Yes, you could fish it just like that. But in order to make this more like a, a mayfly nymph for a scud, we're going to kind of put a shell back on there. So the key to this is to have nice and sharp scissors. And I'm going to come in here and just trim the top of the fly. Make sure you do a really good job trimming. You don't have any stragglers poking up because we're going to put resin over this so you can see it's got a nice flat top haircut right now kind of like Curtis gets when he's feeling frisky he looks like a freshly shorn sheep right now <laughs> <laughs> all right 
So there are going to be two layers of this. Um, layer number one, we're going to put down a little bit of this loon fluorescing finish so that it soaks into the body. And you don't need a lot. I'm going to go over the top of the whole thing. I'm just going to let that soak in a little bit while I search for Curtis's infinity light. Oh, that is very fluorescy. Boom. Okay, so now we're going to build up that wing case. And this is actually going to be more durable than some than a wing case if we would have put like thin skin over the top of this. Uh, mostly because the resin seeps down into the material and it's a better bond. So now I'm going to take Loon Thick and just put a dollop on there like that. And we'll take a, a bodkin now and kind of manipulate that how I want it to be. I want it to taper toward the back and kind of build up to the front in in like a, a tapered thinger. Kind of like that. Where'd I put the light? Okay. So if I would have just put that thick resin on, it might not bond as well because it doesn't seep down in as well as the the fluorescing or the flow. So once I have that cured, I'm just going to go over the top of it again with the fluorescing to give it some extra brightness. If you get too much on, you just wipe it off with your finger. And there you have it. That is the squirrel nugget. So imagine fishing that, you know, I, I'm thinking still waters, uh, but it has that kind of nice nymph looking shape it's not a super hatch matchy fly but just represented enough representative enough for the fish to eat it and don't forget all the materials for this fly can be found on store.flyfishfood.com and in our retail store in Orem, Utah 932 North Orem, Utah Unit 4 for the Amazon guys